Anyone who is here has probably had some kind of experience with hot potatoes so far. Um, if you go back to your Avenue courses, you will see that you have probably used them in your training as SCORM objects, or you have been using them with your students in your courses. And just to refresh your memory, some SCORM activities that we use with our students, and I was showing you this example over here that we will recreate together today to see how it works. So you have this opening page here with a table of contents. You can click on any of the activities you want, but if you enter, you will see all the activities in the form of a unit. You will have an opening page over here. And here from this drop down menu, you can see the list of activities. And if you click on each of them, the activity will open for you. And so there are a variety of activities that you can make with hot potatoes. And um, so you see that we have some words here and then we have their definitions. Students have to click here on this little arrow and choose the right word for each definition. And exercise two is almost the same. So again, some definitions and drop down menu where they can choose the right word. And um, just to move down to the next part, this is, what I really like about hot potatoes. You have a reading passage over here, and then you have your questions. Now it's really good that you can see the questions one by one because each question is on the same page as the reading. So you don't have to scroll up and down all the time to check the reading and then to answer the questions. Although you could, if you wanted to, you could just click here on show all answers and then scroll down to see all the questions and then um, find the answers from the reading. But again, it's probably easier to just see the questions one by one. Right, so um, it's a close activity. So this is also um, very easy to make, although it looks difficult, but it's not. You see you have a list of words up here. You see the passage has some missing words. Students can click on these question marks and they can get a definition for the word, which is a clue. And then based on the clue, they can um, answer the question. So if they know the question, they can just type it in. But if they can't figure out what it is and they cannot guess, they can always click on hint. And clicking on hint will give them one letter of the word, which is the first letter. So you see the letter P appears. So this will probably help students guess the word. But if they still can't do that, they can click on hint again and they will get another letter. And so they can click on hint as many times until the word is complete, but of course they will lose all the points available for that question. And um, question five is an ordering question, which you could again create in Hot Potatoes, but not in the programs that I'm going to talk about today. Right, so let's go back to the program itself and see how we can create these two, I mean, these activities using two applications. Um, in order to have the hot potatoes program, you need to find it on the internet first. And this is the first thing I do when I want to search for it if I don't already have it on my computer. I click in, I, in Google, I just type hot potatoes and I get to that page and click, but if you don't wanna do that, you can just type in hotpot.uvic.ca and get the program um, online. So you have the homepage over here, you move to the downloads area and you click here. In the downloads area, you can see Hot Potatoes 7.0 installer. Please click here to download the program. And um, once you do that, the download starts and the program starts downloading somewhere on your computer. Usually it's in the download area, but maybe you have different files where you have set up before. So after the download completes, it will ask you if you allow this app to make changes to your computer. Of course, you have to say yes in order to use it. So you click on yes, and then you will see this little window where you have to select your language, which is English by default. So you select your language and you click on OK. And then the wizard shows up for you. So the wizard usually has a bunch of next buttons that you have to click. 
and a bunch of agreements that you have to accept. Of course, if you don't accept it, you'll not be able to use it. You click here and then you click next. I'm sorry and to interrupt. Yes. Um, would it be possible to use the, uh, the slideshow view so that we can see the words a little bit bigger? Oh, sure, sure. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, is that better? Excellent, thank you. Thank you. All right, so you have the setup wizard, you click on next, and then you have to agree with the and license agreement given to you here. You just click here, I accept the agreement, and then you click on next. And then you have to choose the destination folder where the program needs to be um, saved. So the default is program files, but you can choose another one if you want to. You can just click browse and choose another folder. And then you click next. So it will ask you if you would like to have a desktop icon. I usually say yes, because this is one of the programs that I use very often. So I like it to be available and at hand whenever I want to. And then when I click on next, I can see this shortcut appearing on my desktop. And um, before I start working with the program itself, I'm just going to um, give you a few housekeeping tips. So uh, first of all, for those of you who have been present in my previous um, webinars, you know that I usually like to have my questions ready. Um, on a Word document. So I did it this time as well. It's faster in the presentation. And also, even if I want to create a test for a classroom, it gives me more direction and organization when I see it on a document. So today I'm going to create two different kinds of closed tests. I have this one where I want to delete every nth word. I have this one where I want to um, just delete a few target words. And then I have five different questions that I want to create in the jQuiz um, module or application. So other than that, I do have a video that I want to share and I saved the link to the video in YouTube and I already have it open over here in my other browser and it is here. So this is the video that I want to share with the, um, in the activity with the students. And finally, last but by no means least is this little folder here. So I have all the pictures, all the media files that I want to use in this activity in this picture, in this folder. But this is not just for making work easier and just having everything in one spot. The most important reason is that when I'm creating an activity, I have to save it in this very folder if I want to send it to Moodle. So I cannot borrow a picture from my pictures file and then borrow a document from my documents file and then borrow a link from my other areas of the computer. Anything I want to use in the hot potatoes um, program or rather activity that I want to create, it needs to be in this file. And you will see shortly why that has to be. Click here on the shortcut. And you will have this little window appearing here. You see some potatoes. Each potato represents one of the applications that helps us create activities for our classroom. The first one is the JCLOSE, uh, helps us create closed tests, closed activities. And then we have JQuiz, which helps us make um, around four different kinds of multiple choice tests and varieties, of course, of MC tests. You have the J-Cross, which you can use to create crossword puzzles. And you have J-Match, which is used for matching and drag and drop activities. And you also have J-Mix, which you can use in order to create scrambled sentences or scrambled words. And um, then you have the Masher. So the Masher is like a binder where you put all of the activities together and then you somehow present it as one single passage. So let's say you have a closed um, activity and then you have some comprehension questions and then you have a crossword puzzle and you want to do them all as a unit, you will use the masher. So I'll go back to the example we had in Avenue. And uh, sorry, that little 
thing is on my way. So here you have that um, avenue activity and you see this is made with the masher because there are more than one activities over here. So all of these activities are, I mean, each activity is made with one of the potatoes and then the masher puts them together and makes a unit. So that's what we're going to do today. Right, so let's start with JClose. This is one of the easiest and most amazing tools available for creating um, the close activity. And um, I'm just going to resize the windows. First of all, you need to give your title and uh, your activity a title or a name. So I already have my title here. I'm going to copy it from here and paste it over there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to just copy this and paste it over here. But if you wish, you could also type it. There's no problem with that. So the easiest way to make a closed test is to click on auto gap and choose a number for N. So you already know that when we want to make a standardized closed test, the best way to do that is to delete every Nth word. And the best value for n is apparently somewhere between seven and nine. So if I want to create a really standardized test, I can just give a number like nine and click on OK. And just as easy as that, the closed test is created. You have all these blanks which are created really neatly. And you don't need to add any of those special characters that you had to use in Moodle. So you remember for Moodle, if you wanted to create blanks, you had to have square brackets, curly brackets, or other um, characters. Or maybe on H5P, you had to use a star. And that could create some errors. Maybe there was an extra space. Maybe you didn't hold shift, and then you got the number eight instead of a star. But this doesn't need any of that all, at all. You just um, give a number, and you're good to go. And this activity is actually ready to use right now. I'll show you how. So for anything you create in the Hot Potatoes applications, first you need to save it if you want to see what it looks like. So we have um, different ways to save. You can either go here to the File tab and click Save. This is similar to many other programs that you are familiar with, or you can just click Save here. I'm going to save this over here. I mean, click this one, and I'm going to choose the folder that I had on my desktop, and I created it just for this purpose. Remember that little folder over there, the Parliament Buildings? I'm going to save it here in this folder, and I'm going to call it PB. And I'll save it there. Every hot potatoes activity has to be saved twice. The first time you save it will be converted into a hot potato source file that you see up here, JCL. Okay, so yeah, back to the activity. We saved it once with JCL format, which creates a source file. Now this source file can only be opened using the Hot Potatoes program itself. You cannot use it usually with any other program. If you want to see the activity in your browser, you have to save it a second time using this little button over here. You just click it. And then you have to save it in the same folder, which for me was the Parliament Buildings over here. And then it will be converted into an HTM um, for a file type, which is readable by your browser. And this is really necessary to see it in your browser. So you click Save. And then you have the option to view the exercise in your browser. And let's see how it looks like. There you are. See how neat and pretty it looks. Like there's none of that big fuss over typing. There's no mistakes obviously because of that. And you have your index page. You have um, the arrow buttons where you could go back and forth if you had more activities, but I only have one over here. And um, you have this little exercise one um, word that you can change later. I'll show you how. And you have your title. You have your instructions, which are given by default. You can change them if you want, just like Moodle and H5P. You have all your blanks here that the students can type. So if they type an answer, 
they can always click on check to check their answer. When it says the score is 0%, it shows that the answer is incorrect. So we will remove that. I mean, we just click there and give the answer again. And I'll check again. So my answer is still wrong. Now here I need a hint. So the next correct letter is added to the answer. I can see here, click on okay. So must be it. I'll check. Okay, so I still don't get any score because I um, use all the clues and the hints, but you see that the correct word is somehow integrated in the passage. It doesn't look like a blank anymore. So this is something cool. At the end of the day, when the students have answered all the questions, they will know that the ones that still have a blank, they need to be uh, written again or answered again. So back to the program now. So let's think that this is the best standard way that we can create a closed test, obviously, and theory does support that. But in our classes, we just taught some vocabulary and we want to make sure that the students have learned those words. So this is more like a skill building activity. It's not really for standardized assessment purposes. So what I wanna do is to remove all of these gaps and start from scratch. Now to do that, I click here, clear gaps, and then there's a window that asks me for confirmation. I say yes, and then I go back to the plain text. So the gaps are all um, disappeared. Now I want to add my uh, gaps one at a time, and I'm going to go back to the reading, um, to the document that I had over here. So the gaps that I have highlighted here, one of them is popular. So I'm just going to double click on the word to select it and go down here, click on gap. So this will first of all, highlight the word and underline it and then give me some options for this uh, gap. So I have gap number one, it's numbered automatically. The word is given to me here. Now I can add a clue if I want to the answer like the activity that we saw on Avenue, there was a clue and the clue was the definition of the word. So I just copied that definition over there to my word document and I'm going to paste it over here as a clue. So the sentence reads, it is a small pretty city and a popular tourist destination. I do understand that if people respond with famous, instead of popular, it's still correct. Or at least to me in my classroom and my context, it's acceptable. So I will add one alternative correct answer, which means if a student answers famous instead of popular, they will get their point. And for the second word, another acceptable alternative can be well known. And a third one could be common. And maybe there's also a fourth one, but I only have options for three. So I just click here on this little arrow upwards and I get another blank. So this is similar to what we have again in Moodle. You can click to get more blanks if you want. And also in H5P, you just click and you get other options. So you can go on indefinitely. You can get as many alternative correct answers as you wish. So I only have um, those three and I'll click on OK. So one gap is taken care of. My next gap is the word port. So I'll just copy it over, oh, sorry, I'll highlight it over there. Click on gap and the definition that I copied from the activity is pasted here. So for this one, I don't want to add any alternative correct answers. Both of these are optional, by the way, adding a clue or not adding a clue or alternatives, they're all optional. So I'll click on OK. And then my third gap is the word impressive. Um, I'll create a gap, add the definition as a clue. No alternative answers I could think of. I'll click on OK. And finally, we have the word traditional. I'm trying to find it here. OK. Create a gap and just copy 
and paste it over here. So now I have four gaps and I can save it and show it to you on my browser. Right, so you see the first activity looked like this. You had every nth word, there were no clues. And the second activity looks like this. So you do have your clues. If you click on this question mark, you get the definition of the word, the clue. And if you click here, you get the hint, the first letter of the word, and the rest is almost the same. Right, so I feel this is a little boring. So I'm going to change the look a little bit. And I'm going to go here back to the activity. And I'm going to add a picture to this file. So I choose where I would like the picture to go. And for me, I would like it to go on top of the reading passage. So I will make space for it and go to insert and click on picture and choose a picture from my local file. This is the folder that I already chose and I already created. So I'm here, the folder is here. I have this building that I uh, found, this picture over here, and this is exactly like Moodle. So it does give you the um, choice to resize your picture and to choose the alignment. I want it to be center aligned and then I don't want to resize it. I'll see what the size looks like. If it's good enough, I'll just leave it as it is and click on OK to see what it looks like. I'll save once in JCL format, save it twice in HTML format. So again, I'm going to go and remove this picture. So I'm going to add um, a listening activity here. So there's an audio file, the students listen to the file and they fill in the blanks. So I'm going to insert the same as I inserted a picture, a media object here. So the media file has to be chosen from the same folder. So I'm going to browse and click okay. And from this folder, I had a reading of the same passage. I'm going to add this reading passage. And if I want to add a simple link, I can click here. If not, I can just remove this tick. I'll click on OK. And I'll save the activity. So you see that the activity was saved in this little folder over here. The listening activity was also drawn from this folder, so it looks good here. So let's go back and add, I'm going to click on insert, picture from local file, click on open and okay, save and save again. So you have the listening, you have the picture, and you have the closed test. Now this looks really good and I really like it, but because of this picture and because of this little audio file, the students really have to scroll up and down and that's something that I really dislike. It, it's really inconvenient when you're concentrating on something, like if you're listening, then you have to scroll up and down to see the passage. So what I'm going to do is to move this picture and the listening file to a different section of the page. And you see that we have a lot of empty space around this picture, so why not use it more efficiently? So I'm going to go back and this time I'm going to click here on this little icon that looks like a book. This icon creates a window to the left of the activity. So you click on reading and you add a reading text and you must remember to tick this little box over here. You can give it a title. I'm going to say um, image just to fill it out. You don't have to have a title, by the way. And then here you can do a number of things. You can either add your listening um, audio file here. You can add a picture or you can add, also add a link. So first I'm going to add what we already did. So a picture is going to go here. 
um, this picture of the building. And I'll think I'm just going to keep the, the size like it is. And then I also had an audio file, which was a media object. I'll click here and I'll browse to find that media object. So over here, open and okay. And let's see what it looks like now. So I'll save it once and then save it twice. All right, page is now in two parts. We have a left side, and then we have the audio file over here. We still have these two over here, and the quiz falls below the two pictures and the audio we have there. So I can delete these to make it look better. So let's start from here and delete everything from here. So now we should have a cleaner, nicer, activity. There you are. The picture, the audio file, and the reading passage. So again, this is only one of the features of HP uh, Hot Potatoes. You cannot see it in Moodle or H5P. And um, it's really good to have everything right in front of you instead of the need to just keep scrolling up and down. Now, another really nice thing that you could do here is to add a video here instead of um, the picture. So you go here to the reading text and then you remove this picture over here. You just delete it. And instead I'm going to add that little link that I showed you for. So this was the link to the file on YouTube. I just want to find the sharing link so I can um, copy the link into my activity. What I need to do is to click on share. And then from all of these icons, I click on embed. This will give me a code. Just copy this code over here and paste the code here. And that's it. Let's see what it looks like. Right, so the video appears here, the audio is still there, and you have everything on the same page, and less space is wasted on this page. Now, if you still want to make some more changes, that is possible. But before I do that, I want to show you one more cool, very cool, in fact, uh, feature of um, the close activity. It's in fact for all of the activities in um, Hot Potatoes, but I really like this one. So I'm just going to clear these gaps for now and create the auto gap again. So you have the close activity, so we're on um, square one. Now what I really like, especially when I have a face-to-face -face class and I have to use paper activities is that I go here on file and I can export this for printing. So once you click on this window, all the exercise is copied to a clipboard. All you need to do is to go to a fresh Word document. Like so. And so it's copied, you just paste it over here. And the result is, a uh, okay, just disregard these links for the um, passage, you can always delete them. But what I'm really talking about is this. You see how beautifully it's numbered? You have all those beautiful blanks and there's no messy underscore dash thing or the numbers are not confused. And you can also see um, the key. So we, this is the complete form of the passage, so you don't need to have an answer key. And you can also see all the words or numbers which were deleted in uh, from the passage under um, the activity. And I'm not really sure what this green thingy is. It wasn't there about an hour ago. Anyway, so this is really cool. You can um, uh, print almost all of your hot potatoes activities in Word, which is one of the best features. 
So back to our close activity, if you still feel like this gray that we have over here is too um, boring, we can always change that by clicking on options. So here you can configure your output. You can click here and you can also click on this little icon. So again, you can see that they're somehow echo each other. So click on configure output and then you get um, a lot of tabs that help you somehow configure um, your activity. The first tab is for titles and instructions. So you remember that exercise one that we saw in our activity over here? This is there by default. So if you plan on having more than one exercise, you can always change this, or you can change this for exercise one, but for the next one, you can call it exercise two, three, so on and so forth. And then here you have the instructions. These are there by default. You can just keep them or change them. And the next part, you can change the prompts and feedback. Again, this feature is available in Moodle and H5P. The wording might be a little different, but um, the concept is the same. So you can keep these if you want, or you can change them. I think they're good enough, like they're informative enough and I don't feel a need to change them but I can have a lot of fun with these buttons. So there are some buttons that you can choose to have or not to have, like the hint button at the bottom of the page. If you don't want to have it, you can just click uh, untick or un uncheck this box. Or if you want to um, have clues, you can check it or not check it. So it's really up to you. And here you have some words and captions for the buttons. So just to refresh your memory, you have this word index, you have this, you have the question marks over here, and then you have the check, you have hint, and you have some other buttons that appear during the activity. So in order to change those, you just click here and you change the wording. But you can always change these two images as well. So just move your mouse, delete what was already there and click on insert. So for check button, I want to put a little picture and I have here the picture of a check mark that I'm going to use. All right, so this picture is way too big. I just want it to be as small as an icon, not a huge picture. So what I'm going to do is to resize this and make it really tiny. So I'm going to use 50, 50 and I'll click okay. So my first button is done. And then caption for OK, I can still save this or I can change it and insert a picture. So let's see what good picture I have for OK. How about this one? Again, I'll resize it and I'll give it the same size so all my little um, buttons um, have the same size. And caption for hint, again, you can change it with a picture from a local file. And I had hint, so I'm going to use this. And caption for clue, which is a boring question mark. I'm going to change it here and insert a picture. And I have this little detective magnifying glass that I'm going to resize and use it. All right, so you kind of got the idea. You can change all of the rest if you want to. So I'm just going to show you how this looks. I hope I chose them from the right folder though. We'll see. Okay. So you see this little here, this check mark that was for check and this one for tip. And I don't have any of the feedback um, buttons. I didn't add any clues. So if I want to do that, I'll go back to my activity and clear these gaps and do this one again. So we'll just say famous and I'll add one clue. Well, no, and I'll just stop here so you can see what it looks like. Okay, 
So you see that for this, the only gap that we have now, there is a little clue um, button. If they click, they will see the clue and they have this little OK emoticon. So this is the kind of thing that students like a lot. It gives a little life to your activity. So if you still want to change anything, you should. Um, for popular, I want to see this word again. The only way that I can have access to this word is to click on show words. So here it will show me clues and the alternative correct answers. I already have them there, so just wanted to show you how to go back to the word. Okay, so to change more of the appearance, we will go to configure output, and this time we'll click on the next tab. So here you can add a background picture. I really don't recommend that unless you have a really light picture with very few designs because this picture is going to go in this white area and it's going to cover a large space on your screen. So if you use very busy pictures with too many colors, it's not going to look very nice. And um, you can change the font size and the font face as well using these two. I'm just going to leave them as they are. And um, you can change almost every color you have on this page. So if you want to change the navigation bar color, you just click here on this little rainbow and you can choose a color from these colors or you can go to your custom colors where you get this whole um, bunch of colors over here. Just going to stick with what we have over here and choose this one and I'll click on OK. So I have one color over here. I can continue to change the background color, the white part and the gray part, but please don't do that. Like if you want to use colors, that's fine, but use two or maximum three colors so it's not very busy and try to use colors that go well together. So let's see if we do that, for example. So maybe it doesn't look too bad here, but when it's enlarged on the whole screen, you can imagine how much red is going to cover your activity. So this whole gray area is going to be red. So if you want to use colors, try to use lighter hues. And then maybe you don't want to um, like have very different colors. And this will really help you have a more professional look for your activities, but not overdo it, of course. And then you have the timer over here. You can set a time limit for your activity, the same you would do for H5P or for Moodle. And this tab over here is one of the most important tabs for um, the Hot Potatoes applications. You click here on Other, and there are some options. Some of them, you really don't need to do anything about them, but for some of them, please do tick the boxes. For example, would you like to include a SCORM, act, um, SCORM functions? We would say yes, because eventually we want to upload this to our Avenue course in the form of a SCORM activity. Do you want to use drop down lists instead of text box in output, which is really cool. So all those missing words will only appear um, in the form of a drop down list, not in a form of a text box where students have to type the answer, which is good. I mean, it has pedagogical value if you want to um, practice reception before production, this would be a good option. And if you want to make it easier when you have auto gap and you have several gaps, you can include a word list with the text. Do you want the answer to be case sensitive? Well, in this case, we have too many names, countries, cities, provinces, so it makes sense if we want to make it case sensitive. Maybe we want to um, practice capitalization with our students. And for the rest of the options, I'll just leave them there. I will not um, touch anything because it, they mostly deal with non-Roman characters. And honestly, we used it some time ago with Farsi and it gets messed up. So like Farsi characters go all over the place. So um, I'll just leave these out and then I'll click on OK. So just to see what it looks like, I'm going to save it and save it in HTML and then view in my browser. So there you go, you see those colors. So that was the color that we changed. 
This is the background color, which is probably not that bad, but I still feel it's a little too much. Like it will probably hurt my eyes if I wanted to stay here on this page for a long time. And you'll have all of the other features that in uh, included. So everything is saved. But one more thing before I leave here, in case you wonder where I got all those wonderful emoji pictures, I have this source that I want to um, introduce to you and it's called Pixabay. So this is a fantastic resource for pictures and they are all free, no copyright. And you can search for virtually anything. I searched uh, for Smiley and see how many pictures are available. You can use them. Of course, you need to resize them like what I did. You can, and sometimes if you have a particular activity, you might even find something which goes well with the topic of your activity. And as you scroll down, um, you will see how many pages there are for one image that you searched. All right, so I'm going to go to the next potato here, the J quiz. Now this one gives me options for different kinds of questions. So the question, the first kind of question is multiple choice. And then we also have short answer, hybrid and multi-select questions. So multiple choice is just the ordinary MC that we've seen everywhere. Short answer gives us a text box where we could, where the students actually could um, type the answer. A hybrid question is a short answer question at first. So the students do get a blank and they need to type the answer in the blank. If they get it right, they're good to go. But if they get it wrong twice or three times, you can set how many times they are allowed to get it wrong. If they get it wrong two times, the question will convert into a multiple choice question. Again, there's no feature like this in Moodle or H5P that I am aware of. So it's initially a production type of question, but then it converts into a reception type of question, which is really good. And then they have multi-select, which is basically the multiple choice question with more than one correct answer. So let's go back to the Word document. Just resize this a little so I can use the Word document next to it. And I'm going to create these five questions. So my first question is a multiple choice question. And here, this one is selected. I need a title. I have the title over here. I'll just copy and paste it. And then question number one, the stem goes here. Just copy the stem and paste it over here. And then my four answers need to go here. So the first one, okay, don't need the feedback here. This is the correct answer. And I will type the feedback over here. And answer B, I'll just copy the word paste it here. It's not the correct answer, but I would still like to give feedback because this is a skill building activity and I feel the students can benefit from feedback. Now the feedback could be feedback on their answer like this one, this is the correct answer or this is not the correct answer, or it could be some kind of description of the answer, the wrong answer, or um, it could also be the definition of the answer which is not correct or anything else that you feel could be fit for that particular word. So click that, you add your feedback. And then the last one. And paste. So your first question is done already. Now, if you like to see it like what we did before, you can save it and then view it in your browser. But it's not really necessary. You can complete all your questions in one go and then view it in your browser at the same time. And this is one of the cool features that, again, Moodle doesn't have. So what you need to do in Moodle, as you remember, you go to the category, to the question bank, and then you create a new question, and then you add the new question to the quiz. So there are lots of in-between processes between creating two questions or creating one big quiz. 
but here you can do all of it in one go. So your question number one is done. You click here to get question number two. Now question number two here is a short answer. So I'll make sure that I select short answer from this drop down menu and I'll copy this over here. So this time I have no feedback and um, I'll just check the correct answer. I'm going to do question number three. And question number three is a multiple choice. So I'm going to go back to multiple choice. And it's in fact a true false question. You can use the same um, application for true false and multiple choice. In Moodle and H5P, you had to do these separately. You couldn't do them in the same um, item type. So just copy the question and the answers. And don't forget to tick the correct answer. And we'll do question number four. So question number four is multi-select. I'll choose it here. And we have two correct answers. So I'll just copy this and paste it over here. And then we have the answers. And the correct answer is this one and this one. Um, so please note that if you don't have any feedback over here, it will show the default feedback that the program already has. So you can also add your pictures if you want. So you can insert pictures, you can add media objects or links, but I'm just not going to do that. We, I already showed you um, in the closed activity how you could achieve this. So I'll just go to the next question, which is the hybrid question number five. So I'll select hybrid here and copy this question. So the question already comes with a hint. I can delete it if I want to. It was there, so I just kept it. Just copy and paste over here. All right, so the correct answer is um, England. Now you see the are, there are some options over here and these options ask you whether you want this word to be added to the choices when the question converts into a multiple choice question. So remember the hybrid question, students get a blank. If they can't get it right, then the question changes into MC. So would you like these choices to be added to the MC choices? If yes, you tick these boxes over here. If not, you can remove the tick. So I'm going to save them as they are. Um, I think we're done with all the questions. So I'll save the activity once. Just make sure it's in the right folder and I'll call it quiz. So now the activity is saved in um, hot potatoes format. If I want to see it in my browser, I click here and I click save. And I'll view the exercise in my browser. Right, so you see that all the questions um, are shown. You can see them one at a time or you can see them all together. And um, the feedback is interesting here. So the answer for this question is A. If I click on another answer, I just get the feedback that I added. It's the um, definition of this word. So I'll click on OK. If I click on the right answer, it will show me my score so far. So I'll click here. OK, now the next one. So this is the short answer item. The other word for contest was competition in the passage. Obviously, there's a typo. Let's check our answer. So this tells me that the word is basically correct. However, there are some parts which are incorrect that I need to change. 
And this is really good because like I didn't even bother to add feedback as the developer, but the program does it for me. So the student knows that the other parts of the word are okay, but they need to correct this. So if I remove one T, it's still highlighting the wrong letter that I need to change. So I click here and check and I get the score. So, so far I answered two out of five questions and my score is 80%. And you know, for each wrong answer, I miss some points. So the next one is a true false question. We, um, the answer was false. Okay. And the next one, um, who is Victoria popular with? So I think the answer was tourists and visitors. So I'm just going to check this. So two answers are possible and click here. So now it says four out of four questions have been answered. I mean, four out of five have been answered and my score is 90%. And this shows me the number of correct answers. And then we have this hybrid question. Let's see how it works. So I would say he came from Victoria and check the answer. So this answer isn't correct. Click on OK. So then I'll say he was from Vancouver and check. The answer is still wrong, but you see the question changed into a multiple choice question. So now the students know that this and this are wrong, they have to choose between these. And this is the correct answer. You have completed the exercise. Now to add a reading passage to this, you already know what to do. You just go to uh, this little icon over here. You tick, don't forget to tick this, it's really important. And then you add your reading passage over here. So I have these two paragraphs, just copy and paste them and tick OK. View in your browser. Right, so you see this over here and you see the questions. If the students read the questions one by one, they will be able to check their answers with the reading all the time. And of course, you can still add your pictures if you want, your reading passage, your um, listening audio, or the link to the YouTube video. You can add anything you want over here in the reading passage section. So back to our main page, we have some features that were not um, present in the close activity. And it was this tab over here, manage questions. So we can um, see some options over here. The first is view quiz outline. You click here and it will just show you how many questions you have and what the stem of each question is. So it's a good idea when you want to have an overview of your quiz. Like if you feel you have too many questions or you don't have enough questions, you can always have a general uh, overview from your quiz using this. So just um, don't need to do anything about it now. If you want to delete a question, you click here and it asks you which question number you want to delete. You can choose from the five questions that you have, whichever you want to delete, you choose a question number and you click on OK. Next, you can insert a new question if you want. So where would you like to insert the new question? You choose the number and you click on OK. And then you get a blank page to create your question here. Now in the next option, you can move question. This is very similar to the option we have in Moodle when you can pull the questions up and down. You can do the same, but it's not as easy as it is in Moodle this time. So you just choose your question number, which right now is question three. And because it's a blank question, I would like to move it to position six, which is the last question on um, the quiz and I'll click on OK. From this menu, you can also clone a question. 
So if you like to copy or duplicate a question the way you did in Moodle, you can choose your question number and click OK. The question will be duplicated. And then you can choose auto response. Now this is feedback for um, the correct answers and incorrect answers that the students give. We can change the wording, but here you see we do not have any insert um, tab where we can put pictures or um, audio files. So we can just change the wording over here. And then again, in manage questions, we have shuffle, and this is a really useful uh, feature, as you know. You can shuffle the order of all the questions, similar to what Moodle does for you, or you can just shuffle the order of the answers to the questions. So I like to shuffle the order of the answers, but not the questions itself, because it's reading and all the questions appear in order of the reading itself. So I have a confirmation window. I say yes. And uh, so I'm just going to move this a little because I cannot see the top of my page. Now let's go to the options. Now here, other than configure output that we already had in the JClose application, we have a mode option. So far, what we did was in beginner mode because we didn't have any percentage for questions and we didn't really set a mark for each of the answers. But if you want to do that, you click on advanced mode and then you will see that each question receives a weight and each answer also gets a percentage of the correct answer. So for this true false question, obviously there's only one answer and that one answer receives 100% of the grade. But if you have two answers, grade is going to be divided between both of them. But you can still change the weighting if you want. And you can still do this for all of your other questions as well. So when you have multiple choice, you can always choose which questions get uh, what percentage of the answer. And so we'll go back to our options tab and click on configure output. And so the titles instructions are the same, the prompts and feedback, you can do pretty much what you did for your close activity. You can change all the captions of the buttons. You can change the appearance by changing the color, adding a background URL or changing the font. You can add a timer. And this other part is important because first includes SCORM 1.2 functions. And then you can choose to show a limited number of questions on um, each time the page loads. So now we see all of the questions. If we are here, like the students have the option to see all the questions at once. But if you want to limit the number of questions they see each time, you can click this button over here. This um, can check it. Now here are um, the repetition of those two um, uh, manage question options that we had. You can shuffle the order of questions and the order of answers. I already answered them th there, so I don't need to take these anymore. So show the number of questions answered correctly in one guess. Again, that's another option. Let's keep it like it is. And show score after each correct answer. So you saw that after each question, I saw my score. So that's an option that I can choose to have or I can remove. If you want your answer checking to be case sensitive for short answer or hybrid questions, you can take this one and you can show the list of other correct answers. And this one, this number here, this is for hybrid questions. So remember we said after two failed attempts, the students will see the question in the form of a multiple choice. That number is set here. If you want to be more strict, you can choose this number to be one. And if you want to be more flexible, you can give this a bigger number. And again, we have special processing for other languages. We'll just leave these and we will click on OK. So we will save it and we will save it one more time in our browser. I don't think we made any changes since the last time we viewed it. So. Um, questions are all there. Everything looks good. So that is the end of the J quiz activity. I'm going to close all of these and um, take a look at the Masher program. So the Masher program.
It comes with a similar appearance. All you need to do is to add files so the masher can combine them together and create a unit. So click here, add files. And the cool thing I like about it is that the masher only identifies hot potatoes files. And we also call these source files. Masher does not identify any of the pictures or any of the audio files, only these two. And say, okay, okay to all. And the files appear here. So basically you're good to go now. If you want, you can change the appearance like we did. This will change the appearance of the whole unit and you can use those other uh, features as well. To package these two activities in the form of an activity which is readable by Moodle, you just go to actions and you create a SCORM 1.2 unit package. Now you can include an index page or you can have it without an index page. I'll include the index page to show you. So I'll give it a name, I'll just call it Masher and I'll save the file. I just need to make sure it's in the right folder. So it takes a little time. You see that the program is processing the questions and the activities one by one. And when this is done, it means your zip folder is ready. If you want to take a look, you can click on yes. That's usually not necessary, but I just want to show you that um, many of those source, I mean, the source files are here. You have the audio file, which is included in the SCORM package, and you have those little images that I use, as well as some hot potato source files. So your SCORM package is created, and I'm going to show you where it is. So to our folder, here. Right, so you see this masher file? It looks like a zip file. And in fact, it is a kind of zip file, but um, it has some SCORM features which will allow it to open in a learning management system. So I have this masher over here. And now I'm going to go back to Avenue. I'm going to go back to my course. And my editing is already turned on. I'll just move to the topic where I want to add this activity. Okay, so I do have my course, it's open now. And if you scroll down, I will add an activity or resource. And from this familiar window, I will click on SCORM package. And I'll give it a name. And here is where you um, put your package file. So you can either browse or you can just drag and drop. So this is the masher file. That's the SCORM object. I'm just going to drag and drop it over here. It takes a little time for it to read the package. And once it does, it turns into this um, icon. And you can simply save and display. Of course, there are settings that you need to set and there is a really good document that we have for that. If anyone is interested, you can see it in our learn it to teachca page in the support documents. And I can also give you a link if you need it. So anyways, you click on save and display. And you will see this is the first page of the activity. You click on enter. And um, <laughs> try to ignore this if you could. This was from another activity, it's still there. So this is our index page. And um, these are the two activities. You click on each of them, you get the um, activity. So this is the quiz activity. And this is the close activity. You see all the features are saved. Pictures are resized. They shouldn't be probably if I go full screen. Yeah, that's going to be better. And you see the um, little pictures that you inserted are still there. Okay, so I hope that gives you a very general gist of what the hot potato suite is like and what it is good for and how it is different from Moodle. There are a few pros for these activities. 
First is that the J clothes activity is so easy to make. You don't need any of these um, special characters. I like it that I can print everything so easily. And I like that I can reformat and reuse questions with different formats. And then um, I like that I can customize them. I can add colors or change the buttons or change the captions and also this is really important, like when you have hints and clues and scores for every single um, question and answer, this makes it like really pedagogically valuable. There are some features as well, which are shared between the, the three. If you want to have more information, go to the help here on your hot potatoes front page and click on tutorial. And you'll have a whole bunch of tutorials on all the topics. You just click here on start and it will take you through the whole process of creating activities one at a time. And you can also read the help files that are available. You can see the help contents. And if you click on any of these, like if you have a question regarding J clothes, you just click here. And then, so it asks you to click there if you have a question and you get an answer. So each um, spot that you point will give you some information um, about the activity. This has been fantastic. Thank you. Um, I don't think there's any questions from the chat. So if people want to unmute to ask a question, this would be a good time. Yeah, for sure. Thank you again. Fantastic. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for taking care of the chats.